Shopping says so much about human psychology that it's even studied by behavioral scientists. Brian Wonsink is a professor of consumer economics. He studies the way people shop by carrying out experiments in stores. His subjects are often unaware that he's observing them. For most of us, shopping is an everyday experience but there's more going on in here than meets the eye. Brian spends a lot of time looking and listening to how we behave in a store. The supermarket is one of the most familiar shopping environments. We spend 36 hours a year in the supermarket, so we think we're in charge. But as Brian Wonsink's experiment will prove, we're not as in control as we think we are. What we're doing today in the store is we've set up some signs to recreate this experiment. What we've done is we've taken an end cap of soup. We have a sign that says, soup, 79 cents. What we'll be doing is we'll be watching how many cans of soup people buy from that end cap. And then what we'll do at intermediate times is we'll switch that with a sign that instead says, soup, 79 cents, limit 12 per person. And we'll see if we find people buying a lot more from the limit 12 sign and from the no limit sign. Based on all the stuff we've done in the past, we're gonna see a big difference. First, Brian set up the no limit sales sign and no one paid much attention. But when Brian put up a sign saying limit 12 cans, it was a different story. How did the shoppers account for their sudden enthusiasm for Campbell's soup? So why did you buy more today? What's going on? Well, there's the sale, and I thought, might as well just stock up. They're not going to go bad, and cool. it's good. That's, uh... How many cans of soup do you typically buy when you, when you come shopping and you see a sign that says 79 cents? Oh, I don't usually buy this many, but it's on sale now, so I would buy the limit here. OK. So I'd probably buy about four normally. Well, I bought eight instead of four or five, so I don't know. <laughs> yes, it worked. It worked to a degree. <laughs> Grabbing a cart to do the weekly shopping may seem simple enough. And you may think that when we navigate our way around the supermarket, we're taking it all in. But we're not. Because the supermarket is one of the most visually complex environments we encounter in our daily life. Our brains cope with it by moving into a different state of consciousness without us even being aware of it. To see how this works, a camera developed by NASA to help their rocket pilots assimilate information inside the cockpit is employed to record how our eyes scan the supermarket environment. The iMark camera records the involuntary movements our eyes make. And when we identify an object, our eyes are instantly doing three things in the following order. Looking for a shape we recognize, then assessing the color, and finally scanning the area around the object. This goes back to our very earliest behavior as humans. We look for shape, we look for color, then we look for danger. There are around 20,000 products on every supermarket aisle, but our brains can only process around seven pieces of visual information at any one time. We can't take it all in, so we don't. When we shop, we're in what's called beta mode. This is a scientific term meaning we've switched off gone into subconscious behavior. Have you ever noticed that you don't bump into other people in the supermarket? You're navigating without even thinking. It's like driving a car. If you know the route you're traveling, you don't have to think about it until you encounter something important like traffic lights. 
Then your brain snaps out of beta mode into what's called alpha mode, when you become fully alert. Relate this behaviour to the supermarket and we can see exactly what happens. When we find the item we're interested in, the pupils in the eye dilate and the blink rate of the eye increases. The blink rate proves that the conscious mind has been engaged and we've come out of beta mode into alpha mode. At this point, we go for the product that attracted us. Here's an experiment to prove that people mostly shop in subconscious beta mode. Most of us would expect to notice when something's out of place, or would we? Let's see what happens. Conducting the experiment is John Cox, an expert in shopping psychology. He takes some beer from the beer section and places it on the cereal shelves. He then takes some chocolate and puts it in the cat food shelf. This is how people responded. Can I ask you, did you notice anything in cereals that was different to normal? No. Did you see anything different on the shelf if you passed Kellogg's corn um, face? I, I bought um, some brand, um, yeah. which is on offer. That's, right. that's you didn't I'm notice doing. anything different? About the shelf today no, in, in no, complex. No. What about cat food? Did you buy cat food? I bought the uh, Kit Kat that was on offer. Right. Kit Kat was on offer. Did you see anything in the cat food that was different? Not really. I shelf? did that though, to be honest. On the cereals, did you notice anything on the shelf that was different to normal? No. no not at all. The... Oh, the cameras were there. Yeah, <laughs> but nothing else. No. Okay, thanks, Lizzie. <laughs> We proved from the experiments that people didn't notice these products at all. They did remain blind to them. They couldn't see them, they didn't spot them. Um, nobody that was stopped afterwards could uh, remember seeing anything that we'd placed uh, out of context and within another category. We simply didn't want to know. And it wasn't just the customers who didn't spot the out-of-place products. Even the staff failed to notice. It seems we like to be spaced out at the grocery store. Most of us make an effort, take time out of our day or evening to shop. Many of us make lists to help us shop efficiently, or so we'd like to believe. Most of us feel more confident and in control when we have a list, but once again, our actions can be the opposite to our intentions. Most people believe that if they take a shopping list at the grocery store, they'll end up spending less money because they won't buy impulse items. In reality, the opposite is true for many people. When it, when it comes to shopping, do you pretty much stick what's on your list? Mm, try to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do try to, but um, if I see sell items or things like that, then no, I'll go for those too. People who take shopping lists spend longer shopping in the grocery store people who spend longer shopping in the grocery store tend to buy more items that they didn't plan on buying. So it seems pretty clear that having a list can backfire. The irony is we spend more money with a list than without one. When we've successfully completed our lists, we reward ourselves with impulse buys. We buy more. Brian Wonsink wanted to find out why we often buy more than we need when we go to the supermarket. Is it because we're just plain careless? He went to over 400 homes in search of what he calls cabinet castaways. It was pretty amusing some of the things people drag out. In one case, there were some quail eggs that somebody bought, canned quail eggs that they used for a recipe that never came around. Uh, in another case, uh, somebody had can of whale meat. This is whale meat that was left over from rationing time during World War II and it had actually been passed on from her mother. Um, how long have you had this marshmallow cream mm. with the new uh, liquid bottom? Seven or eight years. <laughs> <laughs> you think maybe I ought to throw it out? <laughs> yeah. Uh, or give it to a friend. No, yeah, that was uh, to make candy. There's a recipe for candy that I've been promising myself I would make, and I got it from a friend, and obviously I've never done it. It's a, it's a Christmas, a holiday kind of thing. So. 
And I think now that it's time to buy another jar and let it sit for another eight years. <laughs> oh, that is, that is, oh, that is amazing. No, what, what is this? It's a beef brisket. Okay. okay. But obviously and, and it's they, too big for that's my right, husband and yeah, I. Yeah, you didn't have anything bigger you could buy though, right? No, no, that was it. <laughs> he kind of thought that was a great idea and he knows we like to have parties, but somehow it's never gotten used and I really don't even know if I can use it now. How long has it been in there? Um, I think about a year and a half. I bought it last summer. Yeah. Not this last summer, but the summer before. We're essentially our own worst enemies. And we're the people who think we're going to have a lot of time to make something and we never make it. We're the people who over uh, anticipate the number of guests that are going to arrive at our house for a party and never arrive. 